Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Undoubtedly, the character Moses stands as one of the most fascinating figures in the sacred writings. He is known for having written the first five books of the Bible, known as the Pentateuch or Torah by the Jews. Additionally, he is also credited as the author of the Book of Job. Let's discuss a little-known biblical mystery among Christians that sparks great interest. Did you know there was a confrontation between the Archangel Michael and Satan for possession of Moses' body? After Moses' death, a rather surprising event occurred, which is described in the book of Jude. In this event, Satan faced off against Archangel Michael in a dispute over Moses' body. This raises an intriguing question, why would Satan be interested in stealing Moses' body? They ardently desired to possess the body of this man of God. Furthermore, the question arises, why was Moses never found? If you are curious about this subject, leave your like, and let's go to another mystery of the scriptures. The hidden secret of why Satan wanted Moses' body. A brief verse in the Bible reveals a secret of great importance, known to few. It concerns the battle of Archangel Michael against Satan for possession of Moses' body, found in the book of Jude, chapter 1. Verse 9. Let's read what is written and analyze the details of this enigma. But Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a railing accusation but said, The Lord rebuke you. This verse unveils the intense celestial battle for Moses' body and highlights Michael's reverence, as he chose not to pronounce a curse against Satan but invoked the Lord to intervene. Many theology students and curious readers of the Holy Scriptures often wonder about this biblical event described in the book of Jude, which took place shortly after Moses' death. This event is shrouded in mystery in the Scriptures because it narrates an epic dispute between Archangel Michael and Satan in person, apparently for possession of Moses' body. What intrigues readers the most is Satan's true intention in ardently desiring Moses' body, considering that Moses had already passed away. It is not difficult to find several passages in the Bible that describe battles between angels and demons. In the book of Daniel, for example, in chapter 10, we can observe one of the most famous battles. In this episode, an angel visited the prophet Daniel while he was fasting. What is noteworthy is that this angel, called Gabriel, reported that he was prevented from delivering his message to the prophet because a demon, represented by the prince of Persia, was in conflict with him. Due to this confrontation, the angel delayed his visit by 21 days. This leads us to conclude that spiritual battles constantly occur, both in favor of and against people. However, it is important to emphasize that Satan's powers are insignificant compared to the infinitely superior power of God. Another notable angel is Archangel Michael, whose name is mentioned several times in various parts of the Bible. The title, Archangel, indicates that he is the leader of the angels and is considered the prince of the people of Israel. He is always defending the people of God. One of the most significant battles involving Michael occurred when he contended with Satan for the body of Moses. The question that may arise is why the devil and this angel would be in conflict over a body that no longer had life. Firstly, it is essential to understand why Moses' body was so precious. In the Old Testament, we find a passage that demonstrates the importance of this fact. Deuteronomy, chapter 34, reports, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, and no one has known to this day the place of his grave. Moses was 120 years old when he died, his eyes never dimmed, nor did he lose his vigor. Since it was God himself who buried Moses' body, the whereabouts of his tomb remain a mystery to this day. This leads us to question why God chose to conceal his body. It's important to remember that Moses was widely revered by the Jews as a great shepherd of Israel. He was appointed by the Lord to lead the people out of Egypt to the Promised Land, demonstrating his remarkable authority and responsibility. 
people were aware of his profound connection with God, which may have led some to consider him worthy of worship after his passing. Furthermore, theories have arisen seeking to explain why Satan disputed Moses' body with Archangel Michael. Now, I will discuss some views, interpretations, and understandings of why Satan may have had this interest in Moses' body. One theory suggests that Satan wanted to take over Moses' body to impersonate him and confuse the Israelites in the wilderness, leading them into sins like idolatry and other moral deviations. However, this view has some limitations since if Satan truly wanted to deceive the Israelites, he wouldn't necessarily need Moses' body. Satan has the ability to transfigure himself and assume the form of another person, which would allow him to deceive the Israelites by accurately imitating Moses, including appearance, voice, and other details. This is the downside of the first perspective, which makes it even dismissible. However, it is a possibility, albeit somewhat absurd. The second interpretation is as follows, Satan wanted Moses' body to bury it as someone wicked, impure, and evil, with the intention of dishonoring him and giving him a dishonorable burial, as if he were a nameless, dishonored person. This would make Moses forgotten or scorned after his death. This perspective seems quite plausible, considering the evil nature of Satan, but it also has its weaknesses, as some argue that this would be too little for Satan's desire regarding Moses' body. Now, I will address the third interpretation, which in the opinion of many theologians, is the most plausible of those I have mentioned so far. There is another perspective similar to the first, which suggests that Satan wanted Moses' body so that one of his unclean spirits, a low-ranking demon, would possess Moses' body and ridicule him before the people of Israel. This aimed to discredit Moses to the fullest, making him the target of contempt and causing him to lose his role as Israel's liberator before the people. Unlike the first interpretation, it's important to note that Satan, as a being with a variety of spiritual powers, would have the ability to impersonate Moses and assume a corporeal form without the need for Moses' physical body. However, the second interpretation suggests that he would be interested in defiling Moses' lifeless body with one of his demons or evil spirits, manipulating it to act wickedly toward the people of Israel. In this view, Satan would send one of his unclean spirits to possess Moses' lifeless body, and during this possession, this entity, obeying Satan, would portray a false version of Moses, performing actions abhorrent and repugnant to the people, pretending to be disturbed and committing various sins. This interpretation is based on the idea that Satan would make Moses, possessed by a demon, act contrary to the teachings he himself wrote in the name of God, leading the people of Israel to commit sins. The seven deadly sins would be represented before the people, with possessed Moses committing the first repugnant sin, which is wrath, manifesting anger, brutality, irritability, and hostility towards the Israelites. Against the people, just as the sin he committed, which God did not allow to enter the promised land, Moses would repeat several times. The people would witness Moses committing the same mistake, leading him to repent repeatedly. The people would then murmur, accusing Moses of being full of anger. The second sin that Moses would commit, when possessed by an evil spirit sent by Satan, would be greed, a repugnant sin in the eyes of God. This would cause greed to take hold of his heart. The people would believe that Moses was acting this way, but in reality, it was an impure spirit controlling him. Possessed Moses would start committing greedy acts, seeking the wealth of the people of Israel for himself and imposing taxes on the families and tribes of Israel. The people would be furious with these greedy and covetous actions. Moses would demand gold and silver from everyone and severely punish those who refused to pay, while the impure spirit within him would carry out disturbing acts against those who resisted. The third repugnant sin that the evil spirit would commit in Moses's body would be pride and arrogance. Possessed Moses would consider himself a king over the people of Israel, even going so far as to equate himself with God. He would humiliate the Israelites, demonstrating his supposed superiority over them, provoking their anger. However, his arrogance would lead him to place himself above God, 
belittling the people and displaying his pride and superiority over the Israelites in every possible way. The fourth sin, which would be considered repugnant and deplorable in the eyes of God, that the demon possessed in Moses's body would commit, would involve the sin of gluttony and excess. Possessed Moses would organize a feast with all the tribal leaders of Israel and promote a competition to see who could consume the most food, causing some to become ill and even die. Possessed Moses would carry out this action uncontrollably, almost as if he were an animal. The fifth deplorable and repugnant sin that Moses, or rather, the unclean spirit possessing Moses's body, would commit to defile this body would be as follows, possessed Moses would distance himself from all his responsibilities with the people of Israel and basically stop doing anything, showing a deep disinterest and immense laziness towards everything and everyone. This would irritate the tribal leaders, who would start calling him, the lazy one of Israel, instead of the, liberator of Israel. The sixth sin that is deeply reprehensible and repulsive in the eyes of God, the one that the impure spirit possessing and desecrating the body of Moses would have committed, is the sin of lust, together with all its manifestations. This is in line with what Balaam mentioned, which is the weakness of the men of Israel in front of the beautiful Moabite women. So Moses would do it, basically Moses would throw a party in Israel, he would call all the women of Israel into prostitution, claiming in this case that it would be something coming from God and renting them, in this case the unclean spirit would do signs to deceive them and then the men of Israel would do a party where sexual relations would only take place between the men of Israel and the women, in addition Moses, possessed, would also call the prostitutes of Moab and also the Canaanite. Women and Moses, possessed in this case, would have relations thus desecrating Moses' body, the spirit and having relations with all women also effeminate relations with men, thus placing Moses in the extreme of ridicule. The seventh disgusting and deplorable sin that Moses, possessed by an unclean spirit sent by Satan, would commit, would actually be lying. He would perform all these actions while impersonating Moses, without showing any remorse, thus engaging in the terrible sin of lying. It is important to mention that Satan is known as the father of lies, and he wanted to use Moses' body to commit all these sins, including lying. Finally, the unclean spirit, in the name of Satan, would make the Israelites commit the sin that would most distance them from God, idolatry, worshipping the Canaanite deity known as Baal. Those familiar with the Old Testament know that Baal was a representation of a pagan god and that, in fact, Satan was behind this deception. This would result in praise and worship not of God, but of Baal. However, the archangel Michael intervened and defeated Satan, preventing him from taking Moses' body. God did not allow Satan to achieve his intention and sent the archangel Michael to protect Moses, freeing him from the clutches of the evil one. We received a request related to this topic in our comments, did you already know these views and interpretations regarding the reasons behind the desire for Moses' body? Please share your comments and suggest other scripture riddles that might interest you for future videos. Thanks for following along to this point. See you soon.